It's my pleasure to introduce Kelly Bruff to Denver 31 today. Kelly started her career as a counselor for youth in the criminal justice system. She also served for the city of Denver as personnel analyst and legislative analyst. And in 2003, she was appointed as the first female director of human resources. She has spent some time directing an internationally recognized leadership program at the University of Colorado, Colorado at Denver called the Rocky Mountain Program. In 2005, Mayor Hickenlooper tapped Kelly to do several things, including since she was such an effective problem solver, she was tapped to be vital in making city government more customer friendly. Maybe we might have some remarks about that. My pleasure to introduce her as the newly selected president of CEO and the Denver Metro Chamber of Commerce. Please welcome Kelly Bruff. It's my pleasure to be here. The piece of advice I got as I was coming up was uh, you can't move your head when you speak into the microphone. <clears throat> and for those of you who know me, I can't speak if I can't move. So I'm gonna do my very best to make sure you can hear me. But if I screw up and accidentally move, just put your hand up or give me a signal and I'll get right back to it. Fair enough? <clears throat> By the way, this is how it works. When I ask you a question, if one person nods their head and says, yes, Kelly, that's consensus and agreement, and I just keep going forward. So you also have to slow me down if you don't agree with whoever agreed with me. You know, the thing I love about Colorado, and I've been here since 1986. By the way, my history really just tells you I can't really hold a job, right, when you hear the how many jobs I've had. But I came here in 1986, and I came here to go to graduate school. And I got an MBA, and I never left, like so many people. It's an incredible place. It's a place that when you show up and arrive, truly embraces you. And when I talk to other people, whether it's they visited here or they recently moved here, they can't believe how fast it is a place that embraces you and you can make a difference. What I like to describe it as now, it's a place where you matter. Whether it's your company or you personally, you really do matter. And what we care about is that you show up, that you work hard, that you're committed to doing something important, and we'll, chances are we'll get behind you and help support that. And frankly, that's what you all are all about, and it's such a great example for our community of that kind of leadership and what's needed to make a difference, especially during these times. It's also an ideal I think the chamber has held for a very long time. And it has been incredible to be embraced by the chamber community and the business community as I've come into this role. I don't know if you know this, but the chamber is the longest operating business in the state of Colorado. Uh, unfortunately, we got that a year ago, that honor, when the Rocky Mountain News went out of business. But today now, it is the longest operating business. We represent currently about 3,000 employers, and what probably is as important as that is they have 300,000 employees that belong to those organizations. There's, I'm going to give you kind of a quick overview of who the chamber is because we have five kind of divisions. And if you will, the chamber itself is sort of the parent company of the organization. Oversees four major performing areas. One of those areas is our public policy arm. This is our team who really tries to influence mostly state policy. We do a little bit at the federal level, but mostly state policy to ensure that the policies in place really reinforce what it takes to have a strong, thriving business community. Another piece that that policy team does is really spends time trying to put in place those things that can make a difference for our economic development activities, the second major thing we do. And at the Chamber, our economic development arm is independent. It's separately funded. We bring together economic development organizations from around this region so we really cooperate. So we don't have cities competing against each other for a business to come, but we really work together, not caring always where the business goes, putting them in the city that makes the most sense for them, because at the end of the day, all ships rise when we bring that tide up. And we've had a lot of success in reinforcing that regionalism in our economic development strategy. A third very important area is our small business division. 
It's a division a lot of people don't realize we run. It actually is funded both by the chamber and by the federal government. It's an official small business administration office. It broke every single record last year that we have ever had in terms of the number of small businesses that were advised, the capital we were able to put in their hands, which right now is probably the most important thing we can do for small business everywhere. And it probably is also one of the reasons Colorado continues to be pegged as one of those states that will be one of the first to emerge from this recession is because our state is truly made up of small business that that is the majority of who we are. And we won't grow 500 or 1,000 jobs at a time. We'll grow five and 10 jobs at a time. And it'll be those small businesses that do that for us. So we spend a great deal of time making sure they're supported and able to bring us out of this recession. And the fourth area is our leadership development. We have a foundation in the chamber, and it spends a great deal of time ensuring that not only current leadership is able to really provide civic leadership, but also that those up-and-coming new stars out there get a chance to come together, really understand our community and region, what are the challenges and issues, and what does it really take to be successful in this environment, and what's their role in it. And that leadership um, development has been crucial, I think, to our success and a big part of why our business community is so involved and so committed to making sure Colorado is a great state. So I come today with some good news, and I'm not supposed to say bad news, so I now say I come with some good news and not so good news. So let me share a little with you about the current state of where we're at and how we see it and some of the challenges we face going forward. The really good news is, as I mentioned, we continue to be pegged as one of those states that we should be the first to emerge, or one of the first. One of the reasons is we have the number one uh, number uh, per capita four-year degrees in the state of Colorado. We are very, very competitive in this regard. How many of you moved here, though, with your, your college degree? Moved from somewhere else. And that's our challenge. We really are attractive to people when they get their four-year degrees. They often come here. I'm one of those. So the great news is it puts us in a good position. The bad news is that we are now not graduating kids at a rate that we probably won't maintain that position in the next decade to 20 years. 68% of our kids are not graduating from high school, are, are graduating from high school. That means 32% of them are not. And that is extremely difficult in, an, in a knowledge-based economy. And that 68%, less than half of them are going on to college. And so we really have to look at our education system and make plans today about how do we advance that and move forward so we don't lose that competitive edge of our kids with degrees. By the way, we also score number one in the country on ACTs and SATs, our kids do. They really are smart. Of course, what I tell my children is that's a lot of pressure. You better do very, very well when you get to your ACTs. Okay. Here's some uh, more good news. We are uh, one, let me make sure I get my number right. Number ninth in the country in terms of our income levels. Pretty high, not too bad. We're doing pretty well. The not so good news with regard to income, we are the fastest growing in the nation for childhood poverty. Fastest growing in the nation. That's a surprise to many of us, isn't it? And what you realize is we probably can't maintain our position for the average income if our child poverty rates are growing faster than anyone else. We are 48th in the country in terms of funding for higher education. Uh, by the way, this was done in 2008. We have now dropped to 50th. So I used to say in my speech, the good news is we're beating two states. The, the bad news is now we're not. And this is a huge challenge as we try to figure out how do you manage the state budget and what do we do to make sure we get those kids into higher ed, they get the education they need, um, and we're able to fund it. It's a huge challenge going forward. The good news is we're a very healthy state. We're actually the leanest state in the country. Now, Tom Clark, my colleague, points out that uh, that's because everybody is getting larger, and I said, whatever the reason is, we're still the leanest, um, and we're gonna count it. it the, why is this important? It's because heart disease and diabetes are very expensive diseases. They drive health insurance rates, and obesity is one of the biggest predictor of those kind of expensive diseases. The not so good news, anybody here in healthcare? Our insurance rates are seventh highest in the country. Now you'd think if we're the leanest and we don't have some of the challenges on our health care, 
we might have lower rates, um, but we're not getting the benefit of those lower rates. And we continue to have businesses who are struggling to figure out how can you, under this current situation, provide health care or address the cost of health care. We are continue.